Hello again everybody and welcome to another video and in this one we are trying to find out what the most fuel efficient speed is for a gasoline powered vehicle. I am currently on my way to a back road where there will hopefully not be a whole lot of traffic so that we can conduct this test without interruption. I will be slowly ramping up the speed starting off at around 10 to 15 miles an hour, whatever my idle speed happens to be without having to apply the brake and we'll be slowly ramping that speed up and recording what our MPGs are at each speed. Of course, the results will vary with your vehicle, but we should be able to get a general idea of what speed range you should be in to be able to maximize your efficiency. I have given my car a quick wash this morning to knock off some of the excess dirt just in case aerodynamics does come into play. I have also pumped up my tires completely. So I have been driving around for some time now trying to find the perfect location to do this experiment. The country back road that I originally selected wasn't used by somebody who was walking their horse. This is Texas after all. Um, but I have driven about 20 miles out of my way and I think I've actually found the perfect location. It is the access road on the side of the freeway. It has a speed limit of 65 miles an hour and there is not a whole lot of traffic here. I've been watching this stretch of road now for about five minutes and I haven't really seen more than but one car pass by here. So I shouldn't be interrupted a whole lot. I can throw my cautions on as I'm doing my low speed tests and I shouldn't be very much disturbed. It is fairly straight. It does have some elevation change to it, but I think that does make for a more realistic experiment because roads in most of the US are not always flat. So having some elevation change in there, I think will actually help in the accuracy and validity of this experiment. I would also like to note that I am running my air conditioning. I am not trying to hypermile this experiment. I'm not looking to get the most MPGs possible out of the car. I'm trying to get a more realistic example of what your MPGs look like over speed. All right, so let me explain how this is going to work. I am setting my cruise control for each of the individual speeds that I'm using on this stretch of road. This road is a two-way road. There's both the north and south lane. So I'm gonna make a pass going both directions. I'll record what the MPGs are going each way, and then I will average them out to get what the MPGs are for that particular speed. So now we just need to repeat this about 10 more times or so. Fortunately, we are picking up speed, so this won't take as long, but I am anticipating it's probably gonna take another hour or two. Uh, it's not the most exciting experiment, but if you are watching this, I haven't died of boredom yet, so that's good. So allow me to roll the time lapse as I complete the rest of my runs. Alright guys, and now it is time to get to the most exciting part of this experiment, which is the results. So for this experiment, I was able to start off at 20 miles per hour and was able to ramp it up in 5 mile per hour increments all the way up to 65 miles per hour. In the very beginning, the first data point that I got at 20 miles per hour came in at around 33.7 miles per gallon. And over the next couple of data points, this quickly ramped up as the car was getting more and more efficient, gaining speed. The reason for this quick ramp up in the very beginning is because at slower speeds, a larger percentage of your car's performance of the uh, engine work that's being done is going into running the air conditioning, the water pump, and some of the other parasitic components that are inside the engine just to keep it operating. So because of that, you're not spending as much of your car's work just trying to push it along at speed. You're more so just running your air conditioning for longer than you need to, and this ends up decreasing your car's fuel efficiency at low speeds. So it quickly ramps up and then it peaks out at 35 miles per hour, getting 42.9 miles per gallon. This is the most efficient data point that I was able to take during this experiment. And then over the next few miles per hour, the miles per gallon slowly begins to drop all the way down to about 50 miles per hour, at which point it takes a very sharp turn down and we begin losing miles per gallon very quickly. This is mostly due to the fact that as we start to get up to larger speeds and the engine begins running at higher and higher RPMs, the engine's not running as efficiently and you're beginning to really battle drag as you get above the 50 mile per hour mark. And that is why we end up seeing a pretty quick decline in the car's fuel efficiency. Now, I took these results and performed a polynomial curve fit to try and get a smoother curve here to be able to represent the data, as well as I applied a small bias factor to it to try and bring down the actual MPGs based off of what I've seen previously in my experiments calculating the MPGs at the pump. And the results are as such. The actual peak it looks like at which I get the most fuel efficiency is right around 33 miles per hour at 42.4 miles per gallon. This is a pretty interesting curve. As I said, we do see that quick ramp up 
from the increase in fuel efficiency early on. But most importantly, we see that there is a quick downturn around 50 miles per hour. I think that is particularly interesting just because we do start to see the miles per hour, or miles per gallon rather, dip pretty quickly as the car ends up getting up to speed and the fuel efficiency of the engine quickly starts to drop off. Now, of course, these results were only based off of one vehicle. They are going to vary depending on the type of car that you are driving. I do also have a 370Z that I wasn't able to get out there today, but if we were to try and compare the two, the 370Z does have a 3.7 liter V6 as opposed to my Sentra's two liter inline four. And if we were to try and compare the 370Z to this, I would expect the miles per gallon to actually peak out at a slightly lower level. You would of course expect to see that it is less fuel efficient than the Sentra, but I would also expect that the peak would be slightly shifted to the right, that we would see peak fuel efficiency at a slightly higher speed. I suspect this is the case because with larger engines, your car is doing a lot more work to keep it cool and there's a lot more friction and just general loss in the engine. So to try and peak out your MPGs and increase your efficiency, you'd wanna be moving at a slightly faster speed to try and accommodate for this. Plus I suspect higher horsepower engines will just run more efficiently at slightly faster speeds in general. So that would be interesting to compare to see what the difference in the curves look like if we were to look at two separate vehicles. It would also be interesting to see how terrain plays a role in shaping this curve. I have done a previous experiment before on a freeway, which was a lot more flat than the hills that I was driving over today. And I was able to get closer to 36 miles per gallon at 65 miles per hour instead of 32. I suspect this is due to the fact that with the constant elevation changes, especially when you're going uphill, the car will run more efficient at slower speeds because when moving uphill, it's doing more work to actually just lift the car up in altitude and get it on top of the hill, so much as actually just driving it along the road. So it ends up wanting to run more efficiently at a slower speed. Likewise, the fact that you're constantly going up and downhill means that the engine is changing RPMs, and this does lower the efficiency a little bit as well. So if we were to run on a flatter surface, I would suspect that the curve would be shifted slightly upward a little bit more to be able to meet that previous data point that I've taken on the freeway, as well as you may see the expected peak in MPG to occur again further along in the mile per hour range a little bit more to the right. So it would be interesting to conduct both of these experiments and see what the actual results and the outcomes look like. Um, fortunately, I wasn't able to get to this today, but this may be something for a future video. Thank you for watching once again. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below, or you can also message me at the Horizon, and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Make sure you like and subscribe for more videos, and I will see y'all in the next one.